Over the years, there's been a major influx of flies and streamer patterns that use the rhea feather as their primary material. I thought it was time to just explain how and why the feather is used, in case you were thinking about purchasing some for your own fly tying. Let's start with what the rhea bird is. The rhea bird comes from South America and is very similar to the ostrich. Their fibers are long, durable, and relatively sparse. If they're applied properly, they can give a fly a full profile and extra length if needed, all the while ensuring that flies aren't overdressed and that they can both penetrate the water surface and the air while being cast. They are stronger than those of ostrich, hold their color better than most feathers used for these purposes, and are able to be tied in as long or as short as the tire prefers. Plus, because they are so much thinner, you can fit more pieces into your fly without going overboard. For example, let's do some basic math here. Say that the rhea to ostrich ratio is 3 to 1. For every one ostrich fiber that you can fit into a fly, you can fit in three of the rhea. Say a fly properly dressed can only accommodate eight pieces of ostrich. Well, that same fly has the ability to hold 24 pieces of rhea that won't break as easily, won't fade as readily, and will undulate with more action in the water. Now, of course, the big question is, how do you use them? There are different ways, but I'm gonna show you how I use them, and I'll let other YouTube videos teach you the other applications. In a nutshell, there are two main ways to tie in rhea fibers. You can wrap them, or you can stack them. Personally, I stack them, and I'll explain why. To wrap the feather, you obviously can't wrap the main stem. It's far too thick, and it would look ridiculous wrapped around a hook or a tube. To make it work, you have to strip the membrane that holds the fibers onto the stem. One of the problems here is that it takes one or two trial feathers to become competent doing this. If this is the method that you choose to do, then what you're gonna to wanna to do is soak the whole feather in a mixture of water and hair conditioner. From here, this softens the stem and then the membrane is easily peeled and from there it's wrapped around the hook shank. But I found a number of things went wrong when I used this method. See, the membrane has to be palmered tightly side by side with each wrap. As it is quite a wide material, it takes up more space than I prefer and the delicate membrane is left unprotected and open to breakage from teeth marks, bad casts, general wear and tear, and honestly, it just takes up way too much space on my hook. I don't have the patience to counter wrap wire and super glue only stiffens the fibers if it spreads. The other thing about wrapping Rhea is that you're stuck with the little broken bits that are amidst the lengthy fibers and you're unable to pick them out. The other difficulty was adding colors without overdressing or having to hassle with multiple curly stems. And sometimes I was forced to use extra long rhea in flies that I wanted to give a shorter profile to. So I looked at an alternate method, the stacking option. With this, I could now save time without having to peel stems. I could pick out the little guys without compromising the membrane strength. I could tie in my fibers as short or as long as I saw fit play around with different color schemes, give my salmon flies a simple top feather wing if I so inclined, and reinforce my materials without having to worry about them uncoiling. There was, however, one disadvantage, and I'll address that in just a moment. First, I try to have some sort of dubbing underlay to assist in volume. There are all sorts of excellent materials on the market that will help you to achieve volume in your fly. I like to use materials that don't merely weigh the fly down, but rather help my rhea to maintain a splayed profile when it's in the water. Pre-dubbed brushes are probably one of the easier ways to do this, and I just tie them in, fold each side back to meet one another, and then proceed to palmer it on. Just be sure to pick out any of the trapped fibers so that you're not left with something that resembles your cat's hairball on a hook. Ugh. Then, cutting close to the stem, I cut off between five to seven fibers, sometimes more, sometimes less. From here, I grab the tips of the feather, pull out the short ones, gauge how long they need to be in relation to the hook, decide if I want feathers to cover the entire hook circumference, decide if I want multiple colors. As a side note, this works excellent with trout streamers if you're trying to imitate a bait fish with a white belly or a red slash, as it's easy to just put a quick little splinter of color in there. Then I tie in a small clump to the left, to the right, to the top, and the bottom. Each stack gets a quick thumb jiggle to help spread out the fibers, and a very strict rule that I try to teach is to never use more than three wraps of thread per step. In just a minute, the fly now has a distinct profile without using copious amounts of fluff or other materials that tend to have difficulty appearing full, yet comparably sparse. Now, where does this method lose its advantage? Well, if four stacks of rhea with three wraps of thread equals 12 wraps of thread on a fly, it can become overdressed quite fast. So after you have your stacks wrapped in, try the following. With your holding hand, firmly grip the fibers already secured and unwrap 12 times. Don't panic.
keeping your hold, tighten up your bobbin, rewrap three times, make it snug, and voila! I give it a quick dab of super glue, wait a few seconds, then I use nail clippers and a pin to quickly and closely trim the ends. They cut easily with the dried glue, and from here I just finished with a thin head. There you have it. There are lots of materials and methods that work best for different people, but this is the one that has been working best for me. You can find our Rhea for sale at www.flygal.ca under the gear tab. Thank you so much for watching.